Hi everyone and welcome to another exciting edition of Words, Images, and Worlds. Delighted on this episode to be talking with author, illustrator, comics creator, cartoonist, whatever, whatever verbal <laughs> happens to work there, Jeffrey Brown. Jeffrey, thank you for jumping in and joining me. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. I will start out by naming a couple of titles, universes that you've worked in extensively in Star Wars with Jedi Academy and books of that nature, uh, Batman and Robin and Howard uh, being one of my favorites. And then you also have the Lucy and Andy books as well. Um, so lots of wonderful creating out there from you for uh, sort of a young audience, but I would say an all ages audience because I, I'm 102 and I enjoy them. So, so it works, <laughs> works well. Yeah. yeah I've, uh, oh, go ahead. I, sorry. I was just going to say, I, yeah, I, like um, I think all ages is a, like, I'm a big kid. So I just write for myself. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm a grown up, but kid at heart. So. Yeah, I think all ages is a good, a good way to describe. I love it. I love it. At, at what point in your um, childhood and adulthood, uh, at what point on your journey did you know that comics were the space for you? I mean, when I was a kid, I was convinced like comics was my calling. I was going to grow up and draw Marvel comics, mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. um, you know, drew all my own little versions was like, you know, building up my portfolio to send off to Marvel and never did. And, you know, as I left high school, went to college, then I, you know, became more interested in fine art and kind of drifted away from the idea of, of making comics as, as like any kind of end goal. Um, and I thought I was going to be a painter but I was still drawing lots of comics and my drawings and my sketchbooks were very cartoony. Mm -hmm. And um, while well, I was in uh, art school pursuing my MFA, I kind of, that's when I kind of realized like, Oh, comics is the thing. So basically I was disenchanted with painting um, in general, but also my, my work in painting specifically, like I was just like this, isn't satisfying to make. It doesn't seem to like express ideas I want to express and it's not fun. And, mm -hmm. um, and so then I just started really like diving back into comics to kind of take a break and reset. And I was like, Oh, this is, this is what I was supposed to be doing this whole time. I, um, so the, the painting was just kind of this, this detour in a way. Yeah. Yeah. At what point did you, um decide to that, that all ages i guess would be the way to say it or younger audiences and all ages was the space that you wanted to particularly craft in in comics i mean it it kind of it happened pretty organically so i mean i think when i was a kid i i think i wouldn't have labeled it as all ages but i that's what i imagined making mm -hmm. is you know I, I didn't imagine writing for adults. I didn't imagine, like specifically, I didn't imagine like writing for kids necessarily, but I just imagined like writing stories that that I as a kid would like to read and that I could imagine myself as an adult wanting to read. Um, but I started off writing specifically for, for adult readers. Um, I was doing autobiographical comics when I was in art school. Um, and then it just, um, by chance, uh, I had the opportunity to to kind of work with Star Wars, and mm -hmm. the the idea was, um, you know, how awkward everyday moments between Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader would be. Right. Um, and my son was four at the time. I was like, oh, I'll make I'll make Luke Skywalker four, and then Darth Vader's like in my shoes as a parent, you know, and. I thought, you know, I'm writing for for people like me, grown-ups, but I was making it kid friendly. I thought, like, you know, I'm like making something that like, you know, like if a kid picks it up, they're not going to be like, you know, traumatized by <laughs> what they're reading. And um and then when the book came out, like like the the parents loved it, but then kids loved it too, and I was like, "Oh, that 
you know, worked out really well. Mm -hmm. Um, so it wasn't necessarily intentional. And then, um, so the, the marketing kind of pivoted from marketing to adults to marketing to kids, just because of, um, it was almost like they had, the publisher had to change how they marketed it because that's all the response they were getting was like, you know, requests from kids magazines or parent magazines. And, Mm -hmm. um, and so it, then that led to doing the middle grade books, like starting with Jedi Academy and those two, I also, um, you know, even those are the, the, those were intended specifically for, for a younger audience, you know, I still approach them writing the same way I wrote my autobiographical comics for adults, where mm-hmm. I was, you know, just telling these, you know, awkward, embarrassing stories, you know, of like things you do when you're in middle school and you know the difference being that's set in the star wars universe so there's you know aliens and they can use the force and and these things but at the core of it like the emotional core was still kind of kind of i approached it the same and so i think um you know the for for that book and for that series and and then following that with like the loose and andy and the Intertal series mm-hmm. it was more letting the editor um pull me back if things were like like you know like this concept is too advanced for kids like let's pull that back or you know there's maybe like a little more physical comedy than than i you might start with if you're writing specifically for an adult audience but like i really i just like i i just think of them as like these are funny stories and um yeah 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 cool very cool yeah uh, love the pathway and um, seems that folks take slightly different pathways, but uh, great to see you on the shelf next to a variety of experiences, a variety of pathways as well. Um, you've created, as I mentioned, and you've mentioned Star Wars, Batman, Mulder and Scully is on the list. Mulder and Scully. Yeah. Um, is it Neanderthal or tall? What should I say there? So, so Neanderthal is the, the pronunciation. So, so, in German, the H is silent. And so actually, if you look now, a lot of the spelling, they've they've removed the H ah. just so they're like, like, okay, just to make it clear, everyone, <laughs> like it's tall. Um, but, you know, I, I, I also think like, like as someone who grew up pronouncing things wrong, like his entire life and s- continues to do so, like I, I, you know, I'm not going to fault anyone for... <laughs> <laughs> for saying Neanderthal or um so I've trained that. myself now where I'm I'm pretty consistent. Um but yeah yeah well I, I will say Neanderthal. Um any any particular worlds that you want to bring your vision to that you've not yet crafted in or any sort of dream characters or worlds that you would want to mm-hmm. to work in. Yeah I mean so so there's there's a ton like you know as growing up as a kid of the 80s like like there's so many like properties that i just grew up like loving like Mm -hmm. and star wars was a big one and um you know like marvel superheroes batman is another one like and i'm starting like to do some more marvel um so i did the thor and loki book that, Mm -hmm. that came out uh, in the spring um but yeah like the, i think the biggest thing that i haven't tackled so i've done like lots of science fiction but i haven't really tackled the fantasy side um and so i grew up as like a big fan of lord of the rings and dungeons and dragons um and also it's been a while since i've i've really like worked in my own world i guess i did the lucy andy series and then i did a couple books in a series called space time um mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um but i yeah i'd like to do something with fantasy that's kind of my own take on it not necessarily like a licensed property um and i have like a story that i've been working on kind of on the side in between projects and just kind of having fun um that said like i would love to do like like the hobbit or you know Mm -hmm. lord of the rings sometime like that'd be fun even if it's just like the hobbit calendar would be (laughs) <laughs> like I used to, that used to be my calendar every year. So, 
Yeah, yeah. The the world of Tolkien. Absolutely. I would I would love to see that. Um curious about a positive connection along the way that you've made with a, a young reader. Any experiences that come I mean, to mind? There's there's so many. Um I mean the biggest thing is just like getting letters from kids who um are inspired to write. So mm -hmm. it's it's really like I guess humbling because when I think about like when I was a kid, like, you know, it's like I read this author and this saw these comics and like, like, I was like, Oh, I want to like, like they inspire me. And mm -hmm. then now to get letters from kids and, and hear like, Oh, I read Jedi Academy. Now I'm working on my own series of like, like my own characters in like a Jedi Academy school or, um, or, you know, just like, getting those responses is, is like really amazing. I think, um, you know, it's being creative is a really rewarding thing. And I think in today's world, um, and, and maybe in the past too, but there's like this perception that, um, you have to be really good at it. It has to make money. It has to be like a thing. Um, and even I fall into that trap sometimes. Like I forget like, oh, I can just draw a comic for fun for myself. It doesn't have to be as like, you know, a project that I'm going to take to a publisher or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. pitch to someone later. Um, and so like, like those, those responses from kids are, are really rewarding because you see like, they're just, they're just doing it because they're, they have ideas and they want to get these ideas out into the world. And like, they're figuring out what are the ways that I can, um, express my ideas in the world. And so I think that's like, that's the thing that, um, is, is like always interesting. So, you know, and, um, yeah. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I still say I'm a teacher and so I save notes from students. Um, so it's, it's great to have those kind of interactions and, and to know that what you're saying kind of lands somewhere out there in the world yeah. um yeah, yeah curious by means of a, a final question and then we can hit anything that we might have missed um next creative steps upcoming titles uh anything that's in the space of what's next that you'd like to mention yeah yeah so i've got two books that are actually um due to come out uh next week from when we're recording this so it's um I have an X-Files book, The Extra Files, which is, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and this one is, it's, so I, you know, I say I write things all ages, and this one is maybe a little less all ages, but also just by nature of, you know, The X-Files show, it does not have a big, um, younger viewing audience. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But it's similar in style to the Darth Vader books, where it's single page, just kind of gag comics and um, just funny takes on on the mythos of the the show and then um a new star wars book the mandalorian and child uh, um, uh -huh, uh -huh. which is you know uh rogu uh instead of you know him and the mandalorian uh you know running across the galaxy from danger like they're you know you know chasing bubbles or or whatever so um those are the the two projects that are coming out soonest and then i just finished it's still being colored but um i finished a sequel to my batman and robin and howard book nice um, nice and awesome. that's it's gonna be actually released in three like individual issues and then collected uh in a single volume so um yeah and then like so i'm starting to work on on new things that i can't talk about yet which is like right. always like the <laughs> The one of the downsides to working on licensed properties is like it's like okay when can I when can I tell people right like, you know so it seems like I'm not working in anything for a year and then awesome you know here's an X Files book and um and then I'm trying to work on some personal projects so I've got kind of like a a cat book that I'm working on a little story like fun story and I don't know where that'll end up just yet but. Yeah, I always try to have lots of lots of things going. Love it. I love how generative and prolific you are, and um, the work keeps coming. And uh, I appreciate the the humorous side. That your style 
invites young readers, older readers. It's it's a it's a unique thing. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Anything that we missed that you want to make sure to add before we close out? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We've covered uh, like like kind of my whole career just yes, in this that's, time. Yes, that's what we did. Like, yes. uh, um, <laughs> it's a yeah, retrospective and a future perspective, and I don't know. Yeah. Spect is part of it, at least. <laughs> um, no, I think that's just about everything. I mean, you can look at I. So I'm I'm not super great about posting regularly. Uh, about things but i try to post semi-regularly on instagram mm -hmm. and it's at jeffrey brown rq um and i usually try to do more behind the scenes -y kind of stuff but um a lot of times i'm just not thinking about it so um but yeah you can see glimpses of interesting things well hopefully interesting things there definitely definitely interesting things yeah well, well, thank you so much, Jeffrey. Glad to have you back anytime, and I'm glad to share about your work. Thank you. Yep. Thank you.